Hello, this is a natural Chase Stevens, and you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13, to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits, and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Live and in Color with Wolfie D and my man, Jimmy Across the Screen. What up? How's it going, brother? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> that was kind of mellow start for it. What uh, up? My man, Jimmy Across the Screen, what's going on today, man? Not much, brother. How you doing today? I'm doing all right, man. As you know, I uh, did my pre op registration. Uh, by the time this airs, I will have had my hyena surgery, my hernia surgery. <laughs> I love call- I've been calling it that forever. Was, yeah, uh, it's, for the people it's that don't know, I had one when I was when I was five years old. I had a hernia, had surgery, got the little scar in my belly button, and it has popped open. Mm. So, we're going to get that fixed on Friday, so when this drops on Monday, hopefully I'll still be with you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> if they don't lose me on the table here in Somerset. This know. is going to be a weird show if you don't, brother. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But, yeah, man. So, the, uh, they say, the doctor told me, like, six weeks or something with no kind of like lifting or anything like that you know i've been not doing that leading up to this because it hurts when i do yeah so it's like man it's killing i'm ready to get back to the gym i need to but i don't know how long it's going to be before i can do that again but like i said he's saying six weeks but then they're saying that it also you know the pretty much the pain is gone within the first i don't know four or five days something like that I, i'm not sure but i'll find out because i yeah <laughs> my michelle had asked me she said well, what did what was it like the first time? I said I was five. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember waking up in the hospital with a Benji uh, stuffed animal. <laughs> Benji, hey dude, yeah. that was awesome, man. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. I love that little dog. <laughs> yeah, it's good, man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What was your last one like? What are you talking about? <laughs> That's, you know how you remember images of, of that age? You know, absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Plus surgery on top of that, you know, I do remember being on the thing. I have a vision of being on the thing and them telling me or my mom, I'll see you later. And then I guess I was asleep. And then the next thing I know, I was in the hospital room recovering, you know, with Benji there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. You're going to have Benji with you this time too. <laughs> maybe somebody can, but maybe the rock star Benji Bowie uh, could, could bring me a Benji. Dude. Benji, come on, bro. Uh, hook him <laughs> up, man. Hook him up. <laughs> but anyway, man, yeah. Great sponsor of the show, Ben Bowie. Yep, it's awesome. Benji. Um, but yeah, man, good show today. Uh, hooked up another one here. Uh, been forever trying to get old Chase on here, but today we got him. And uh, I said we cut to the chase and get to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say some other stuff, but that's too much perfect segue. That was I way love too it. much, way too much dad joke in there for that. Yeah, no, that was a good one. You know, obviously we had Dirty White Boy and Ahmed, but today we got Chase, and you're gonna hear all about it after these messages. Hey, folks, to get your official Live It in Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, guys, we are back. And again, you know, I'm always having good guests. We're on a roll, Jimmy. We're on a roll about having some good guests, ain't we? We absolutely are. <laughs> Man, I, ca- I can't wait to get this conversation going. A dude that I've known for quite a long time, the natural Chase Stevens. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man. How you guys doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. What are we up to this morning? Uh, waking up, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> natural wake-up call here. 
we had to set Chase Stevens time. Now this is the time that we do it normally anyway. So perfect. We're, everybody's awake and probably had their cup of coffee or something, huh? Yeah. I had a, I had a shot of Jack. So we're good. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's Chase's that'll, coffee. <laughs> that'll, that'll, that'll get started, won't it? Man, Chase, uh, finally get you on here. I mean, we've, we've been doing this show for, fuck, what, two years now, Jimmy? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, just and, over. Uh, and, and again, I, it's, and some of the people that are closest to me haven't been on here. It's, it's really funny. But it, it's, it's, it's aligning everybody's schedule and, and all that shit. But we finally got you, man. I'm glad to have you on, and I hope to have a really fun conversation with you. We've done some miles together, man. Uh, we've wrestled each other. We've wrestled against each other. We've been in many different locker rooms together, man. It's, it's, it's been a pleasure knowing you, man, for real. Man, I'm glad you said that on live on the air, man. I'm gonna, ah. I'm gonna tape that. <laughs> it's recorded, brother. You can have it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm recording that. That's that's going on my ringtone right there. <laughs> uh, that's fun, man. The the one that was really funny to me is uh, you you having all your you know road time in and everything. Uh, Jimmy, can you believe that Chase didn't know how much gas he had in his vehicle, or was the gauge broke? I can't remember. The gauge, the gauge was broke, but I was, okay. I was, we were talking. Yeah. You know, we were, we were doing everything <laughs> illegal that we, that that you could be doing on the road. Right. <laughs> there were not, not, none of us have driver's licenses. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> like, we got old this. containers. Uh, let's let's try you know, this real quick. Because I had uh, been on um, what is it probation or for a for a charge, nothing serious, folks. But anyway, I was on probation and I was scared to death, man. But when I got in the car, I was scared to death just because of the situation. Yeah, <laughs> that's just as far as we'll go with all that. But the, the, yeah, so the things we do to make our towns. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we were late. We were late. And, yeah, and totally late. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, Lee Chris was with us, and, and a yeah, of- we had ha- we had half the show with us, so yeah. so yeah. I wasn't really worried. I mean, if if we didn't make it, the show was not going to go on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we get going. I don't even know. Fuck, we were maybe past Bowling Green, headed to. I met past Louisville, I feel like I don't remember where we were going, but no, we went uh, past Louisville. We were, we was about forty five minutes from Louisville, though. We was like in like like that uh like. Uh, Cave City area, like yeah, a little bit above yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, on sixty five, you know, on the interstate, and yeah. we're you know we're just we're just horse around telling stories. And I meant to I meant to get gas. I meant to take an exit, and get gas. I wasn't paying attention to the gauge, <laughs> and all of a sudden the the check engine light comes on. And I was like, oh god, god, we're out, we're done. And oh, Opie's like, dude, you got you got thirty miles. Of the, the light come on. I was like, not on this car, man. When it comes <laughs> on, it's done. And all of a sudden, as soon as I said that, I was like, kuh, 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 kuh. And I was like trying to fight it over to the side of the road. I mean, it was done. And he's like, are you kidding me? I was like, man, I wish I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first thing in my head, I'm going. The cops are gonna come. I mean, that's just what's gonna happen. Bro. Oh yeah, out of the road and look at us and. Here, they're coming in a second now, so I'm panicking. And, and, we and it's like it's like hot too, man. It's like July. We're like yeah, dripping sweat. Yeah, yeah. you know. And uh, keep going. Not familiar with I-65 in that area? There's not a lot there. When you when you pass the major towns, there's not a lot there. Yeah. And we no. look over, and there's a house, one house, and you got to go down like a farmhouse. <laughs> yes, you, you got to go down the embankment, climb a barbed wire fence, and then go on to some stranger's property yeah. that lives out in the country. <laughs> like a six foot barbed wire fence too, not like a not like some little you know <laughs> white picket fence. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a. It's it's a I'm escaping jail type of fence. And is <laughs> right. this shoot barbed wire or working barbed wire here? No, shoot. Uh, it's shoot. Wire. It's shoot. <laughs> yeah. I don't and Wolfie goes wire, Jimmy. I'm just saying barbed wire, you know. <laughs> Wolfie goes Wolfie goes, I'm I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna go over there and get some gas. I was like, You gonna get over that fence? And he's like, Yeah, I'll, I'll get over that fence. I was like, well, I mean, more power to you, man. <laughs> I was desperate. I needed to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, he, man, Wolfie was ready, man. He hit that fence like, like a, I don't even know, like a, like a ton of bricks. I mean, he just ran down that hill, hit that fence, and, and went up and over it like he's done it a couple times before. 
<laughs> he takes off towards that house, and I was like, man, that house is farther than he thinks it is. You better slow down. You know, he, he had a good half mile run on him. But, <laughs> but from where we were sitting, it was only like, a, you know, it only looked like it was like a block away, but I knew it was. Yeah. I knew it was in the distance. Yeah. And as he's going, man, here comes like these two Rottweilers come running, start charging oh, at him. Oh, hell. <laughs> so, Man, you thought Wolfie was running fast trying to get that gas. You should have seen him running back trying to get in the car. <laughs> I remember, man, it's like I came around the corner and of the, you know, because I had to get to the door where I figured the guy probably, you know, went in and out all the time. It wasn't on the front side. It was around the back there. So as I turned that back corner, that fucking dog, it was just one of them, just one of them. And, and that motherfucker was jaw barking growling and his face was right at my crotch and buddy i, I couldn't back up quick enough man but i didn't want to back up too quick and then the guy comes out and gives us a ride to the gas station and gives us gas and we made it out of there alive man that's yeah. a movie. that is a movie yeah. right there yeah <laughs> oh man man that was just the beginning i mean that was the that was the beginning part of the trip it oh, <laughs> <laughs> was quite a bit more after that yeah <laughs> There's <laughs> just another day in the night, right? <laughs> yeah, and we drove all the way home that night. After all that, man, like, whew. There's a, we were, man, we were rock stars. We we needed we needed to uh, be making some money, so we had a driver. That's what we needed. But yeah, our yeah. dumbasses, we we wouldn't hire anybody anyways. Even if he gave us more money, we would have just pocketed <laughs> it and yeah. fucking <laughs> done it anyways. So, man. Uh, <laughs> Let's let's rewind, rewind, rewind quite a ways here. What and and, and again, man, I, I know you well enough. For some of this, I know the answers to. Some of it, I don't. But I'm gonna let you tell your story for the listeners that don't. Uh, what made you want to be a wrestler? What did you grow up watching it and all that stuff? <laughs> now, hell no, mm -hmm. I didn't watch that fake shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, my my dad, man. Uh, me and my dad don't get along at all. You know, like he's he's never been like a like a real father figure to me or anything like that. But Sundays, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Sundays. It was like the boring day. You know, there's no cartoons on or anything. My dad would like take my toys away from me and make me sit down on the floor and watch wrestling, the US, USWA stuff. Yeah. And I, you know, I was like, I stay at my friend's house here and there. Like this is like first, second grade, maybe even third grade. Like, uh, I, you know, I stay at my friend's house and, and they would watch it. Like with, if a pay-per-view came on or, uh, I think there was like Saturday morning was like mm -hmm. going on back then. So I, I would, you know, I would in passing, I would watch a little bit of it and uh -huh. I would hear them talk about it in school and things, but it wasn't, it wasn't anything serious in my life except my dad just hammering me to like sit down and watch the real shit and make me watch USWA, you know, like the, yeah. the two wrestlers like spinning around on the screen at the beginning. And I was like, Oh my God, I'd rather watch the church channel. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Now that, I mean, now that I'm older and I, you know, I look back and watch yeah. those things as, you know, it's, it's a cool little moment right there, but you know, yeah. I'm glad I got, I'm proud. I got to, my dad made me watch that. Yeah. yeah. Even though back then I didn't understand. Um, yeah. but you know, fast forward, uh, I, I, you know, I started boxing when I was super young, you know, I was, I was eight years old when they got me in boxing and I went all the way through, you know, uh, grade school, middle school, high school, you know, boxing and everything. And I went in the military for boxing. And then I just, I, I you know, just, I was over in Germany. I was, uh, you know, marching those ruck stats up and down mountains and I and I got 20 pounds overweight in my legs uh, for boxing for my weight class mm. so I just it screwed up everything on me uh, I come back home on a, on a leave and I'd met uh, I, I met my what ended up becoming my first tag team partner he was he was one of my high school best friends uh -huh. he comes in and tells me uh, that he's training to be a wrestler uh -huh. he shows me his little shirt I was laughing about it because he was never like you know, he just wasn't like tough in school and things like right. that, but he was, he was a good athlete. Just not, right. you know, and he, and he loved, right. He studied it. Like sh he knew that shoe sizes, you know, like your birthdays, yeah. you name a, a wrestler and he knew everything about him, you know? So, uh, and what school so it, it, uh, it was Washington high school in Indiana, no, I mean the, the wrestling school. Oh, the, the wrestling school was HWF. It was all uh, that with, um, with Mike samples, uh, hardcore wrestling federation out of Evansville. 
Okay. Uh, this is like this is ninety eight. Um, so I I ended up going to I saw you. So he he you know broke that all to me and told me about him training a wrestler, and it just so happened that weekend. I set up an MMA fight in Missouri, in St. Louis, Missouri, and mm-hmm. it was just supposed to be some little little thing that win, win or lose is give me five hundred dollars, but if I if I did win, I get seven fifty. So mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, let's go do this shit, you know. So I go down there, and it's a big show. I thought I was just I thought I was signing up for one of those little bitty like hometown shows, you know. Yeah. And I get down there, and Dan Severn is like the main event on the card, and there's a <laughs> card, and I was like, yeah. I was like, man. I already gave him a fake name and everything. My name was Ryan Arms on the Ryan on the card. I already, yeah, Ryan Arms. That's a, that's that was the fake name I gave him. Yeah. And, you know, so I get out. I you know I got there like super early. It's like uh, there's like snow coming down and everything. I get out and I uh, I'm looking at the the venue poster, and there's Ryan Arms. You know, second match, <laughs> and I was like, shit, this really we are in the right place. You know, I'm like yeah. holy shit. So uh, you know, we we drove around and. And messed around until uh, until the doors opened, and we, we went in. Uh, I stayed, the, you know, I stayed the whole time, watched uh, watched the main event. I wanted to see Dan fight. There's a couple of big names on the card, but I don't know. I can't remember who they are now. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, um, but uh, but I stayed, and watched Dan's, and then when he got done, I was walking back towards the back. He told me not to leave until he talked to me, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh fuck! I knew I should have left. I knew it. <laughs> I, you know. He, <laughs> I was the only one standing there when he pointed too, because I was gonna be like, "Oh, I think he's talking to you." But <laughs> you know, so, so I, I go back there and I was like, "Hey, sir, you you know, you said you need to talk to me." And he's like, "He started talking to me in Carney." And, <laughs> oh my god! Man, I thought I was having a stroke, man. I was like, <laughs> "Shit!" Like, <laughs> what the fuck's he saying? I was like, "Man, I thought he's English." I thought he spoke. To, you know, I, I watched those UFC fights, man. He spoke English. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was just like, man, I'm looking at him all weird. And so he, uh, he asked me if I wrestled and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I wrestled. And he's like, he's like, well, who do you wrestle for? And I told him Washington high school. And he's like, no, who pays you to wrestle? And then everything in my head started going like, son of a bitch, they got paid for that. I was like, man, I got ripped off. <laughs> they didn't offer me a dime. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, so he had to figure it out that I wasn't a worker. And but he said like my charisma and you know, my build and things like that. He's like, he's like, you need to look, you should look into professional wrestling. Like you just, you, he's like, you walked in here and there's like a, there's like charisma to you. Everybody else is just dry and sitting over here in their own little, they're all yeah. little corners and everything and, and you're over there just having the time of your life and like just have this spunk to you <laughs> and because i've always i've always been wiry you know and yeah yeah and so i was like man maybe maybe that's just the, the universe coming together you know like my buddy coming in telling me that he's gonna be a wrestler and then here i am this weekend running into dan severance he thinks i'm a wrestler <laughs> i was like maybe i need to look deeper into this you know so uh so i went to that evansville coliseum on wednesday I got there and and I and I still had my uh my army bonus from from signing from enlisting, uh-huh. so it was like you know three thousand dollars and we'll train you to be a wrestler and I and I watched some of those guys training and I was like man I can definitely do better than these fuckers so <laughs> I, I was like I was like man where I sign up so you know I wrote them a three thousand dollar check yeah. They trained me. They trained me three days. I think it was. I think it was three days. And it was either two or three days. It definitely wasn't more than three. Yeah. And that that third day, it was like, uh, "Hey, we had somebody no show. We need you on the show. This and that." So I, I'm like, "Man, I ain't got no gear or anything." There's like, "Oh, we'll come up with some gear for you. Don't worry about that." And mm-hmm. so uh, I, I get downstairs, and and they got they named me Glacius. So my <laughs> name is Glacius on the card, and I'm yeah, wrestling Julio. this chick. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Julio, I'm right. Re- I'm right. Re- yeah, I swear. <laughs> yeah, Julio Iglesias, <laughs> and I'm I'm wrestling this chick named Tracy Smothers, oh. and her name circled. <laughs> and man, her I'm name. so fucking mad, dude. I, yeah, her name circled. <laughs> I'm so mad, dude. I come I come back in that little stall that they had me chasing in, and my buddy's down there with me, the one that got me signed up for it all. <laughs> And he's like, he's like, well, what's wrong with you? I was like, man, I think they're trying to get me to quit. I was like, they got me wrestling that chick. And he's like, what? <laughs> so, so he goes out there and looks at the car and he comes to the back. And he's like, he's got a shitty grin on his face. He's like, dude, just shut the fuck up and sit down. 
And I was like, man, I got he's got an attitude. I don't even know if I'm gonna ride with him next week. <laughs> like, talking to me like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so whenever uh, <laughs> so when Smothers come in like a little bit later, man, I don't know. Somebody smart him up, man. I think I'm pretty sure he never he never told me, but man, yeah. he comes over and grabs my hand. He's got that hard hand squeeze, and I was like a little yeah. kid at the time. You know, I'm only I'm only like 180 pounds. Yeah. He's got this hand squeeze on me, and he's like. Tracy Smothers. He's like, I'm sitting down. He's like staying up, like staring over me. He just keeps staring at me as he's shaking my hand. And I was like, oh, fuck. I'm from a little town, man. Everybody named her, every, every girl is named Tracy. There was no right. men that they named Tracy. So you know, so I was like, Tracy. shit. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so yeah, he's, he's, he's going over the match with me and stuff, asking me if I knew what he's talking about. I'm like, no, nah, I don't, I ain't got a clue what you're saying. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll go over a hundred more times, a hundred more times. <laughs> and, and we didn't, we didn't go over it one more time. <laughs> so like, cause we was on second, you know? So, yeah. so, uh, he comes out, he's like, you got it. And I was like, no, 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 you didn't, <laughs> you didn't say anything to me. Like you said, we was going to go over it again. He's like, yeah, yeah. We ran out of time. So just listen <laughs> to me out there. Just listen to me. So we get up there and we lock up and I was so nervous. I locked up amateur style, like right-handed style. Oh, and oh my God! Through his teeth, he said, "You don't know how to lock up." But I heard, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, "What the, what the fuck did he say?" Man, he punched me square in the nose, and my knees buckled for the first time in years. Like my knees buckled, and I was like, "Holy shit! Fuck this fake shit, man!" Like, fuck. He grabbed me by the seat of my pants and the back of my. They they gave me a mask, so I, I was like wearing a mask. Yeah. He grabbed me by the back of that mask. And threw me over the top rope, and I didn't even know how to lock upright. So you know, damn good and well, I don't know how to go over the top rope, <laughs> dude. You remember the old lawn darts back in the day? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep, that was fucking me, and I'm not a cat. I fucking head first like Superman, straight to that fucking hardwood floor. Man, I bounced. I was like, man, I. This is like the worst day of my life. I'm like, dude, I don't, <laughs> fuck this, man. I'd rather take my dad's ass whipping all day long than fucking do this shit anymore. You know, he like gets me up. He's like, do you know how to dive? And I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I know how to dive. And he's like, all right, fake one, give one. I was like, what did he say? So I get in the ring. I, I was like, man, he said dive. So I run and hit the ropes and jumped over the top just like I just, just had done, got thrown over the top. Man, he ducks down and I land on his back. And he uh -huh. comes up, he's like, you stupid motherfucker. And I was like, oh, my God, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, it, just, it just kept getting worse, man. He punches me square in the face. He's like, you know, you know what a fucking finish is? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know what that is. And he, like, rolls me in. And he grabs me, like, has me, like, has my knees, like, in my forehead. He's yelling at the referee, I dare you count three. I dare you count three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I got downstairs, man, and he is just yelling at me, just eating me up and down, chewing my ass in front of everybody. And he's like, how long you been in the business, you piece of shit? And I was like, uh, uh, two days, sir. He's like, what'd you say? And I was like, two days. I think he thought I was going to say, like, you know, a couple weeks, a couple months. <laughs> he's like, you only been in the business two, two days? And I was like, well, yeah, last week and this week. <laughs> and, you know, and he's like... Who the fuck put you in the ring? So I pointed at Mike Sables. So then he goes over there, Mike Sables, and they're going at it. Like, I mean, they're like in each other's faces yelling. They come over to me. He's like, you got to change your clothes. And I did because, because they gave me this shit to wear. So I was like, yeah, I got to change clothes. So he's like, all right. He's like, get in with me. I'm going to show you how to wrestle. I thought we were like going down the street because I heard you guys wrestled like seven days a week back then. So I was like, I'm I'm probably just gonna go down the street and he'll bring me back to my car tomorrow or whatever. Dude, I ain't come home for eight months, man. He took me on the road for eight months. One change of clothes. <laughs> like, man, I was like a I was like a homeless slob for eight months, man. Fucking uh I went AWOL from the military because I didn't make my fucking my uh my flight back to Germany because he, he, he wouldn't take me back to my car. So when I get home, my mom, yeah, my mom's like, man, we thought you got kidnapped. I'm like, I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> There's wanted posters of me out, like, uh, milk cartons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Milk, yeah. Milk jugs, my face on them. Oh, Glacius over there on the milk, milk jug. Carton. Yeah. 
with the mask on. <laughs> yeah, with the mask oh on. <laughs> you see Julio? Yeah. <laughs> man, that's great, man. And, and, and you know, the, the funniest thing is, is I can see every bit of that happening as you're saying it, man. But oh. you know, the one thing I felt, dude, people don't understand, well, you know, it's not all called in the ring anymore, but that was the most nerve wracking thing to get used to at first was how the veterans would call shit to you in that grumbly fucking cafe voice, man. Yes. You, you think you heard right, but you ain't sure as you're running in yep. the ropes, you know? Yeah. Question. <laughs> just a big question mark over your head as you're hitting exactly. the ropes. Exactly. <laughs> you got to, you got to step and a half to figure it out. That's all you got to step and a half. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it might even take, you know, hitting the ropes, turn around, kind of seeing what their body posture is. To, yeah. Yeah. Do I got this right. <laughs> yeah. And that's if you're a trained professional. I, I was a, I was a homeless kid off the streets, man. <laughs> like, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> so tell me about you, you mentioned the army and stuff, and, and what? How did that transpire? As far as like in the timeline of wrestling and stuff, so you joined the army straight out of high school, or how did that go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'd already enlisted because I didn't. I was like, man, I really don't want to go to college, man. Mm-hmm. And then so, so I enlisted, and and I was I was doing so good at boxing, and afterwards, like you know, after all that's done, there's nothing for you, you know, like after school's out and all that stuff, so. So I went ahead and enlisted for for the um, Army in boxing because the Olympics was coming up. And you can't have a real job and train for the Olympics, but right. you can be in the military, and they'll pay you to train for the Olympics. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it just all kind of made sense if I wanted to keep going that, that route to every, – everything was just, you know, like maybe I do need to go in the military. I ain't got – you know, I ain't got anything else going for me right now. And, you know, I, I want to be a pro boxer. I want to get my pro card. And – you know, getting getting seated in the Olympics is a is a great way to to get that pro card. You know, there's um, so you know because I didn't live in that New Jersey area or anything like that, so it was, it was mm-hmm. a little bit harder for me being in that little cornbread fed area. You know, uh, to get yeah. to know the right people. It's all who you know. That's all it is. Yeah. And yeah. and I and I really didn't know the right people. And my trainer was from Hawaii. He didn't. He barely spoke fucking English, so he didn't know anybody. You know, so uh, yeah. so. But he was. I mean, I was trained right. Like you know, after after making it in the military, meeting all those guys from around the country and everything. Like uh, you know, I I had a good trainer. I didn't. I didn't even know how good of a trainer I had until I until I got there, and, and it seemed like ninety five percent of them didn't know what the fuck they were doing. So yeah, so I was yeah. I was already on the on the upbeat of the path. It was just uh, whenever we had to go out and do our training and. You know, we'd run missions and things like that. Just carrying, you know, a 75-pound rucksack up mountains and things like that. Yeah. You're just, you can't help it. You're just going to gain weight, you know, and that because yeah. you're just eating high protein all the time. You're not eating much, but you're just eating high protein to keep your, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a strong diet. And you, and you, they want you to gain weight so you can survive without eating, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. You just said screw it. Yeah, well, no, I, I, you can't say screw. They'll come get you. So yeah. I ended up having to go in and talk to them, and uh, you know, I had a couple. I'm like, you'll never be Hulk Hogan. You know, they're like really, <laughs> you know, frowning down upon me. I was like, I don't want to be Hulk Hogan. Like, <laughs> we got one of him. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be glacier. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well, by that time, I changed my name. I was Chase Bradley at that point in time. Okay, so. gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. uh yeah, yeah. I mean, it ain't like I went right in. I mean, I ran for the longest because I was like, man, I'm going to jail. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, we they, they had wanted posters all over. Like, they go they go to wrestling shows with my face on these posters. That's if I was there. Yeah. I swear, Vic the Bruiser called and we we had called. Uh, we was running late. We pulled over. We pulled over and used a payphone. Mm-hmm. And Vic Vic had left uh, Tracy a voicemail on his house phone. Mm-hmm. And he, Tracy called and checked the the voice on his uh, on his answer machine or whatever, and mm-hmm. it said like, "Hey, if you still got Chase with you, like, you know, there's uh there's people here with dogs and everything. They're looking for him. Like, they got they got a picture with his face on it that he's wanted. Mm-hmm. So then 
Tracy gets in the car, starts asking me about it. And I was like, I told you, I told you I had to make that flight. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, they're going to get me kidnapped and chase him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, he was smooth a little bit and drink, uh, you know, yes. on down the road. And man, it always, like, it always popped back in his head. He'd be like, hey, hey did my name ever get brought up and all that shit? They ever say my name? Like, <laughs> That's probably where they got me that time. That's probably where they got me, Chase. <laughs> That's it. Oh, God bless him. Yeah, I know. I know. I love Tracy. I miss him. Yeah, I know, man. I know. Jimmy across the street, join the conversation. So, okay, there's all these all these classic wrestlers you've always heard. I think they even said it about Roddy Piper. And these two words come up all the time. And we hear about them, and I don't think the average listener even knows what it means. Can you explain what Golden Glow? Loves means as as far as like oh it's like that it's like the the semi pro of boxing so you got like amateur bouts and then you got semi uh, like uh, then you got golden gloves of boxing so you travel and you and you got to you got to be in your top rankings of your weight class of your okay. state yeah and then the states you know then you start traveling to other states it just uh they and there's like a uh, little territories just I mean same as same as wrestling like there's little territories and then once you get once you like we had like the tri-state right there. So once you become, once you beat that, th- those guys in your weight class, those, those top ranked guys, then you move on to like, uh, you, you, I mean, you can go all the way up to the, to the very top, top of it. So, okay. yeah. uh, I had, uh, I had boxed, you know, since I was eight, like I said. So, um, once I, once I got 16, uh, I think I, I won the whole thing in Indianapolis and then 17, uh, I won it again. So at the one, 142 and 152 weight class. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So you're fighting some real dudes right in that class, man. Those are the guys that are. Yeah. But we, yeah. And now, now I stand before you, you know, 245 pounds, you know, like <laughs> I don't even, I, yeah. Like I was like, I, I weighed as, about as much as one of my legs do right now to, <laughs> you know, back then. Yeah. So, that's amazing. so let me ask you a question. When did you end up meeting Cassidy Riley? Well, I, man, I was at, I was at Smothers house and he got mad at me and left me. So he didn't take me, he didn't take me on the road, man. So, uh, so I'm there on a Saturday and I, I got up early and I'm, and we, we didn't have very many channels. Like it ain't like we was like hooked up the cable or anything at his house. I mean, he had a beautiful house, but just no furniture. And <laughs> I've been on the road this whole time. So I had a house. Or I had a house. It it all got fucking taken away from me. So I had all this furniture. So it all just made sense. Like, hey, move your furniture in my house. You know this and that. So that's what we did. And so uh, you know, I had all these VHS tapes and everything. So I get up, and as I turn on the TV, like uh, you know, Burt Prentice's uh, wrestling show is like it's real staticky, but it's on. And I was like, what the fuck's this? You know. So I, I watch it, and and. Um, then when Smothers got home that Sunday, I was telling him about um, USA Championship Wrestling downtown, or, or I, it's called something else back then, Music City. Music yeah, City. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling him about that, and he was like, "No, no, you will never work for that faggot." Like, <laughs> oh. you know, yeah, man. He was he was he was mad back in the day, man. Like he he oh, wasn't yeah. about any of that stuff, you know. Yeah. And so, <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, man, you know. Waller's on there, Brian Christopher, the cat. I was like, you know, like there's some big names like going in that the Hardy boys, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I was like, hell Wolfie is even on it, you know, like on the advertisements <laughs> and everything. I was like, I was like, man, like they're all working for him. Like what, you know, how bad can it be? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, like I said, I'm from a little town. I don't know. I don't know much, you know? Right. So I got down there. Uh, I, I just went ahead and went, I was like, man, if he ain't got me booked next Saturday, which he probably doesn't since he left me this Saturday, I was like, I'm going I'm to go hit, hit it up down there. So, uh, you know, there's no GPSs. Me trying to navigate is – I'd never been downtown Nashville at that point in time. So I figured it out. I got there, but I was, I was on empty on gas again. Here we are. You know, and I was like, I was like, man, there ain't no getting home. I was like, so I got to figure this out. Like, I have got to get on the show, like, you know, somehow. So I get in there. And Sarah Lee, the the door lady, yep. will not. This is like two p.m. She will not let me in the door. She's like, it's eight dollars. I'm like, I no, 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 no. 
I'm trying to get on the show. And she's like, yeah, well, the only way you can get on the show is by paying $8 to get through the door. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I don't have eight dollars. You know, so she gives me like the, fuck, dude. Yeah, she didn't, man. She didn't know who I was, and she didn't give a shit who I was. Right. And she gives me a she gives me a styrofoam cup, and I was like, What do you want me to do with that? She's like, Go out there and come up with eight dollars. And I was like, Man, she wanted me to go out and panhandle, you know? So like, so I went out there and I looked around. I mean, I walked around a little bit, and I was like looking. And I was like, Man, there ain't nobody out here, like. It's, it'll take me a week to come up with eight dollars. Like, <laughs> I was like, man, screw this shit, dude. So I went walking back in, and that's when Bert see me, uh-huh. and he was like, he was like, hey, get over here. So I was like, aha, see, told you, I didn't even know who Bert was. I had no idea that was Bert. I was just like, ah, somebody finally, I right, gotta yeah. come up with this eight dollars, you know. <laughs> so I get over there and like, he's like introduced himself and and tell me like who he is and everything, and and uh-huh. you know I told him I was uh, Chase Bradley. Uh, and right on the bat, he's like, he's like, I don't like it. And I was like, well, fuck, my, I don't really care what you don't like, you know. And and he's like, uh, we're gonna we're gonna call you Chase Stevens. And I was like, oh man, that that didn't have a ring to it at all. Sounds sounds kind of gay. And <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was like, sweetheart, I am gay. And I was like, well, shit, I totally ain't coming out to it now, like you know. <laughs> So we're in a full on like argument about this, you know, and, and, uh, we're going, I mean, we're going back and forth over this Chase Stevens, Chase Bradley, you know, this little last name deal, you know, but I really do need $8, you know, to get back. Uh, well, I don't need eight. I need like 10, 15 to fill up the tank and get back home. Yeah. And, and I couldn't even remember what town I lived in. Like I was, try, I was trying to ask people, I was like, man, it starts with an S and man, they were they were giving me all kinds of different different names. No one's giving me Springfield, Tennessee. You know, that's what I needed. I was like, man, I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't sound like it. That doesn't sound like the one I'm looking for. They're like Shelbyville. I'm like, no, Smyrna. I think that's, yeah, yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah, Smyrna. I was like, I don't think that's. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. They were coming up. I was like, it's kind of far. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, uh, um, as that goes on, I get inside. They they tell me get in the locker room, and then when the there's Bayface Hill locker room, so. So you didn't see each other and you didn't talk to each other. Yeah. And there wasn't like, uh, not, a, not very many people had cell phones back then. It was like, it was yeah. still like, you know, it was super sensitive if you even had one. Right. Um, so, so nobody really talked. You just, you called it in the ring pretty much. Well, I'm in the, on the baby face side. And when the card comes back there, uh, it didn't have no chase, anything on it. It was just, mm-hmm. you know, matches. And yeah. I was like, well, shit, Maybe I didn't get on this one, you know, maybe I shouldn't argue this much, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so Bert invites me out like, uh, during intermission, he's like, Hey, we got a newcomer here. You know, let's welcome him in this and that. And I, and I there's like, he's like, you know, now introducing Chase Stevens or whatever. And they're like, Hey, that's you. And I was like, no, I'm Chase Bradley. Like, <laughs> Susan, as soon as he gets the name right, I'll, I'll go out there, you know? So <laughs> dude, he, he reannounces me like three times. They like, keep giving me an applaud and I don't keep going through the, I don't go through the curtain. I'm like, nah, man. So yeah. everyone's like, I, I'm already labeled as a prima donna now because I won't go out during my name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they, they, man, they made me feel bad in the back. So finally, I walk through there. I get in the ring, and he's asked me, you know, he's giving me an interview. He's like, ask me questions. I've never been interviewed at this point in time. He's got right. that great big Coleman Studio uh, camera like set up. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that where this guy's like sitting behind it, like videotaping, you know, and <laughs> he's got this great big red light. I was like, shit, dude, this is way <laughs> bigger than I thought it was, you know? So yeah. as this is going on, uh, I get, I get pushed from behind, like a shoot shove. And like, I turn around and this guy's like, looking at me. He's got a white eye in. He's looking at me. He's like, I've been here three years. I've never had my own personal time on TV. Why do you? And I was like, fuck, I don't know. I didn't want to come out here. You know? <laughs> so, so Bert like pulls the microphone down. He's like, we're hitting. And I was like, man, this is a shoot. Like I'm fucking, so I knocked this dude out? Like, what the fuck? So I gave him a work punch, and he sells it. And I was like, okay, I, I must be on beat. So I work punch again, work punch again. He extends his arm. I grab onto it. He shoots himself off and then reverses me. And he's like, duck one, flying, uh, flying cross body. So, so I ducked one, cross body. Referee comes sliding in the ring, one, two, three. I was like, I, you know, I'm in jeans and everything else, you know, like, uh, Bert's like, get out of the ring, get out of the ring. So I got out of the ring. He's like, Oh my God, he, he just pinned Rick Michaels in less than 30 seconds. You know, we got a new heavyweight champion. Blah, blah, oh my blah. God. <laughs> yeah. 
so, so I get, I, you know, I get, I get the heavyweight title. I'm definitely Chase Stevens now. There ain't no arguing about that shit. <laughs> so, uh, then the, the next, the next, uh, week I come back and the first person in the locker room, I was, I was there first. And then the, the door opens, I look over and Cassie Riley comes walking in. He shakes my hand. He's like, Cassie Riley. I was like, Chase Stevens. He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm your new tag team partner. And I was like, what? I was like, I got a tag team partner. And he's like, well, you ain't got one anymore. We're like, we're going to be called the Hot Shots and this and that. And I was like, whoa, hold the fuck on. Like, so now I'm in argument mode again. I got to go find Bert. <laughs> You're like, you know, <laughs> not going to be called a Hot Shot. You know, like, I don't know who this Cassie guy is. Like, I'm not just tagging with random people. <laughs> can't whore me out like that you know so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was uh it was uh you know everything's like a shoot back then though it, it really was like you know it's different you didn't you didn't get to pick who you wanted to be and you know you didn't get to get to you know you didn't get to enjoy it like the like these video game players today man they get they get to pick you know Whatever they want to be, and they're, I, I read it all the time. Social media, dude, I could scroll right now. Some of it, you know, hey, when I start in a week and a half, this is going to be my finishing move. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck's that even mean? You know what trend that I, the trend that happens a lot lately that I really don't like is this where they say they're paying homage to somebody's match and they do all of the sequence of moves that they did 20 years ago or something. I hate that. Man. Yep. I can't stand yep. that. Yep. I mean, they, I, yeah. I understand if you you appreciate the match, but to say that's what you're doing, do it move for move, just doesn't make a lot. Is that well? If that guy trained you or something, I would totally understand. Like, I would I, I would yeah. more understand, I guess. Like, if, mm-hmm. if you want to use like his finish and move in in the match or or something, because he trained you, not because you watched it when you was ten years old, and that's the one that you remember. Like, yeah. what the fuck? That's the marking sh- shit I've ever heard in my life. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors, and we'll be right back with more Live and in Color with Wolfie D. This is Steve Bowtie Bryant here. Back in the 90s, I was a pro wrestling photographer for the South, and I released what might have been one of the original sets of indie trading cards. I ran across some of these original sets. They were up in Randall Fanning's attic all this time. PG-13 rookie card, Ricky Morton, George Weingroff as the Sheep, Chris Champion, Reno Riggins, Billy Montana, Gary Valiant, the Scorpion, the Medic, Rick Reynolds, Jeff Daniels, Mephisto and Dante, Ben Jordan, Steve Neely, Marcus Woodrow, Clinton Charisma, Little Farmer John. If you'd like an opportunity to get these cards, contact me now. You can get them for only $49.99. Contact me at Steve Bowtie Bryant at iCloud.com. Get your set now while supplies last. Support for Live and in Color with Wolfie D is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFIE at manscaped.com. If my math's correct, that's about 8 million balls. What happened with TNA? How'd you get there? Because that's got to be about the next step. Yeah. Man, that was that was, a, that was another one where Cassidy, you know, they introduced me to Cassidy, and, and it, wasn't that, it wasn't too long after that. Uh, we'd done a few, a few matches uh, together, and Bert had us, like, really, tra- like, kind of traveling. Like, he was running three, I think it was, like, three, maybe four shows a week. And we was on all four of them. Mm-hmm. And Cassie was driving back and forth from Louisiana too. So, uh, and then they, then they told me, Cassie already knew, but they told me that Jeff and Jerry was about to start something and they were going to start coming to the shows and, and looking at talent. Mm-hmm. So then I, you know, I started working out like super hard and, and, mm-hmm. you know, tan and all this other stuff, like really pushing. Cause I was like, man, maybe, you know, who knows? So yeah. we got there and, um, we, it was at the fairgrounds the first time they had come, and yeah. we we worked. It was uh, me and Cassidy against Michael Potter and Big Boy Douglas, uh-huh. and 
uh, Mike Rapato's like, listen, like, I'll call this. He's like, because he's like, Jerry helped train me. He's like, and I know what Jerry's looking for. He didn't want those flips. He didn't want this. And he doesn't want that. He's like, he wants, he wants a, uh, you know, a good tag team, like, you know, double hip tosses and, you know, double drop kicks, like rock and roll express type stuff, you know? And I, it, it made sense to me, you know, it, it all made sense. Like at that point in time, we're, we was like, uh, we was like mid card. Yeah. So man, we go out there and, it's a decent little match, just a little basic tag team match, nothing like spectacular. Right. And uh, and then right after us is AJ Styles and David Young, <laughs> and AJ goes out there and does every fucking flip in the book. And <laughs> Jerry gets up out of his little fucking seat up top and comes downstairs and <laughs> signs him right there. He's like, man, that, I ain't never seen a match like that. That was amazing. And I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, so and then uh then they th- then the main event was uh Harrison Storm and then they tagged and they signed them as a tag team um yeah. that night afterwards and then they called us like two days later and asked us uh they sent us uh, our contracts in the mail for our tag team as well. Hmm. And but the thing is, the thing is, is they signed us as the hot shots. Thank God. Yeah. But uh, when we got there, our first our first day, the the first. So I went down to the Huntsville one, the first one that they were. They didn't use me on that one. They yeah. paid me to be there, but they just didn't have time to put it all together the way they wanted to. Right. So, uh, so I just got paid to be down there, and then the first one that they ran in Nashville three weeks later, um, I come in, me and Cassidy, and first person. Is uh, Vince Russo, and mm-hmm. he's like, uh, you know, we introduced ourselves. All right, Kathy are new, but I, I introduced myself. He's like, yeah, what, what they got you guys tag now? And he's like, hot stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I, bro, bro, listen, I got, I got something <laughs> even better. We're going to call you guys the hot dogs, Oscar and Frank. <laughs> what? And I was like, yeah, I swear to God, dude, my face, it was, who's, I mean, I can't that? even imagine. Russo. Uh, Vince Russo. Oh, bro. God. So, so he's going to be called the hot yeah, dogs, Oscar and Frank. <laughs> and Cassie's got this big shit eating grin on his face this whole time, man. And just shaking, shaking his hand and saying, oh, I love it. And this and that. And I was going, man, I, I had this fucking disappointing look on my face. I was like, I, like, like I'm ready to just punch him right in the face, you know? And, <laughs> and he, he's got this water bottle in his hand. He keeps putting it out. He keeps putting it down like where his dick's at. He's like, we're going to give you guys these big, these big uh, <laughs> dicks and, we're gonna have, we're gonna have women chase you guys, call you guys the hot dogs, and oh this and that, and I and and as soon as he walks off, like I look at Cassidy and I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna be called Oscar or Frank. I don't give a fuck which one you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and Cassidy's like, Cassidy's like, you're gonna do whatever you gotta do, stay on, like get on this TV show. And I was like, I man, I made it this far and I didn't have to do any of that shit. I was like, I bet I can make it a little bit farther. Like, oh man, we were in a total disagreement on this right <laughs> so i just went behind everybody's back i went over to jerry jarrett and i was like hey can i talk to you he's like <laughs> sitting down like watching a little monitor he's like spitting in a cup yeah he's like w-. he's like what and i was like listen i just met vince russo and he like spits in his cup and he's like i don't like him and i was like good i don't like him either <laughs> I was like, we're already one for one on this one like we're good yeah. so uh so i told him like the whole story what do you, you know just like i just told you guys and man he's laughing and he's like what do we, where do we sign you guys as? And I was like, the hot shots. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I, man, I like the hot shots better. He's like, I don't like that hot dog shit. He's like, but I like, I like those fake dicks. He's like, man, we need to get you those fake dicks. And I was like, son of a bitch, man. Like, I talk too much. I should just shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, so, so they got us these fucking strap ons, right? Oh my and God, I didn't know this. I swear we had these strap ons and we had, we had black tights, so you couldn't see them. So we had to get these, uh, we had to get these neon color tights made. Yeah. So it took like a couple of weeks to get them in so you could see like everything. So Cassie has trunks. So it just looks like he's got a big cup on, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he can't really see his and mine's like off to the side. I got bikers on like these orange bikers. Yeah. And, and, uh, so I, it, our, our little, our little deal on the, on the mic was we're pricks. We're proud and protruding and we grab our crotches mm. and so, uh, so so i was like man i'm, I'm gonna get this dick shit over man I, I, so i i sort of mine i outlined mine with a water bottle right before we went out uh, and i and, i'm gonna get and this was working. Dick shit over oh yeah God. yeah well man i mean we already got it so might as well fucking 
<laughs> go for the gold. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's just the yeah. sentence of the show. See if, right I, see if I can get these girls to fucking check me out afterwards. That's what they're talking about. So I was fucking going for it. So, uh, <laughs> so um, we're working at Harrison Storm as America's Most Wanted. And Harris had that stalling suplex. He'd walk you around the ring. Yeah. So I was like, hey, hit me with that suplex like right off the bat. I was like, that way... uh we maybe people will fucking see this dick shit we got going on here. <laughs> maybe so, man, people can see this dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so he's got he's got me up there and he's like he's he's walking me and the crowd gets super quiet. And all of a sudden one guy in the crowd goes, He's got a boner <laughs> and you, man, you can hear everybody start coming together like whispering and shit. I'm like right there and, and Harris is here. I was like, put me down. And he's like, Nope. Uh-huh. He starts walking me around again. I was like, oh, this motherfucker, man. So I start throwing my legs like left and right, back and forth. <laughs> I'm trying my damnedest to get down. And yeah. everybody starts coming together. He's got a boner. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, man, we had like fucking 900 people chanting, He's got a boner. Fucking oh live God. on pay per view. I swear to God, dude. He, when he finally put me down, I was like, I was like, I mean, I just laid there. I was like, You motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I can't believe I never knew that, man. But that is yeah, amazing. I don't tell too many people that, man. And like, then here I am. I tell all. Yeah. I know. I just told, told all your fans. Like, <laughs> shit. That is so fucking funny, man. Man, I don't even know where to go after that. I mean, I swear. <laughs> I mean, I've got a ton of questions. Okay, so, Jesus, that's an amazing story. Okay, so, <laughs> so the Naturals, man. We're, we're leading into the Naturals. Because, I mean, you, you were actually, like, obviously, you're a great singles wrestler. I've always enjoyed your work as a singles guy. But, I mean, honestly, man, my favorite type of wrestling is tag team wrestling. And, honestly, you always had some great partners. Obviously, Cassidy. Then you go into working with Andy Douglas, man. How did the Naturals come about? Um, so... What happened there was you dropped the con- dick shit and then it became the naturals. I'm just kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that dick shit was over, man. You can't have a boner on pay per view these days, nah. evidently. Um, Last funk is ruined. Nah. Man. Anyway. <laughs> no, um, no. We when our contracts come up, uh, there was a dispute with Cassie wanting to want to be flown in from Louisiana instead of driving all that way. You know, he's, he was over eight hours away, and yeah. And it was just money. Money was like tight with TNA at the time, and they wanted to go a different route that way. And then there was no heat there. They just they they just want to get their money built up before they start flying in the lesser talented people, evidently. So um, so they took us off. Um, I resigned. Uh, yeah, I resigned. They, well, we got we got a little bit of heat. We went to WWE. We did some WWE. We did like Monday and Tuesday. Um, so we did raw and SmackDown and then we come back to the Wednesday pay-per-views and end up signing is, is what ended up happening. Mm-hmm. And then, so we did like, I think four shows with them after that. And there's like a little bit of heat cause we did that raw and SmackDown. Yeah. So, so, uh, and I was like right here in town, like in the national area. So, so they wouldn't go like, let me go, go, you know? Yeah. So, uh, I ended up re-signing, um, Kathy, they sent him home. Um, and then they called me and brought me in and introduced me to Andy mm-hmm. and told me that we needed to come up with a tag team name. And Andy needed to gain, uh, 30 pounds in 30 days. Cause they'd like to use us on pay-per-view. Jesus. And man, I throw my hands in there. I was like, this motherfucker ain't gained 30 pounds his whole life. <laughs> I was like, we ain't ever making a TV. <laughs> I was like, shit. Cause I didn't know him at all. You know, and Terry yeah. Taylor was like, Hey, not telling you to do anything illegal, but if yeah. you can gain 30 pounds in 30 days, we'd like to put you guys on TV, you know? And yeah. I was like, we're fucked. We're fucked. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, but Andy did, man. Andy come back in 30 days looking like a freaking pit bull. And I'm over there going, hey, what the fuck are you on? Like, <laughs> <laughs> now I look like the fucking, you know, the, the fucking melted candle, you know, over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so they, they, um, and in between that, they, they wanted to like get to know each other. So Bob Ryder was like, hey, I got a, got a fishing boat down in Louisiana. I want you guys to go down there and, and get to know each other. And I was like, yeah, fuck him. What? I was yeah. like, yeah, let's, let's do this shit. You know? So, so they paid for us, like get to know each other. Wow. So they drove us down, drove us down to new Orleans. This is before, uh, Katrina come through like, right, like maybe like a year before that, two years ago. Now I ain't good with my years, but, mm-hmm. um, but anyways, we go down there and, uh, on the way down, we got Lord humongous with us. Cause they, they wanted to use him 
mm-hmm. down the down the road. This is like the new school one. Um, Ryan Wilson was his name. Yeah, yeah. And he was yeah. just this great big jack dude, man. Uh, he, he, you know, green him. is I, green is grass. I saw him not too long ago. Yeah, know. he doesn't he doesn't live too far from you. Yeah, he was at uh, WWE house show. Oh, was he? Uh, just he, just attending or whatever. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. He just, you know, he, he lost his weight and and he's healthy now and and yeah. doing good, evidently, like from what I hear. So, yeah. anyways, uh, backtrack. He's with yeah. us, so it's it's me, Andy, and him, and we're you know we stop off and eat a few times, and like everybody keeps coming up getting our autographs, and we ain't fucking been on TV yet, and we are like, it's taking like an extra 30, 35, 40 minutes to sign all these autographs, and they're going, man, these guys are stars already, like. They ain't even never been on TV, but everybody thinks they're fucking stars. And I was like, dude, I'm just going to, I'm going to run with this shit, dude. I'm going to tell everybody fucking, I'm already on TV. Fuck this shit. <laughs> I was yeah. like, these people yeah. don't even watch TV. They ain't got a fucking clue. Nobody watches this shit. So, uh, and nobody, nobody's watching TNA at that point in time either. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what their buy rates was, but it was like, it was super low. Like, like 1500 people or something was watching those pay-per-views. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it got us over, you know? So when we got, when we got back, they all talked about it in the office and all that stuff. Uh, you know, they started really like giving us, you know, they had confidence in us to be, to build us to be stars. And they brought us in and put us over here's the storm, like pretty much right off the bat and gave us the world tag titles. And, you know, I thought it was stupid. I had an argument. That was one of those Vince Russo fucking deals. Like bring them in, let's, let's make them stars. You know, they, they win the titles in 30 seconds. I was like, no, why don't we build our way to the top and let these people fucking believe in us? Yeah. You know, but yeah. whatever. So yeah. we went the heel route and just become fucking heels. And, you know, then got that, that, you know, then we just go out and party and fucking everything else afterwards. So we got known as that, you know, like <laughs> yeah. the, the fun time tag team. Yeah. So. Let me ask you this, man. And because I, I know from experience that, uh, I've shot myself in the foot two or three major times it probably, you know, cost me uh, a, a difference in life, I'll say, um, or a different path longer in the wrestling business, that type of thing. Do you think, do you think you've done that to yourself? Would you say why like the, the big contract has never come? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was sitting there. I, it, I, it was, it, I it was in front of me. That, <laughs> I wouldn't say that if I hadn't experienced the same shit myself. You know, people say, would you change stuff? Fuck yeah, there's a lot of decisions that I made that I wish I wouldn't have, you know? But yeah. uh, talent-wise, man, I, I feel that there's no reason why you shouldn't have been picked up a long time ago. I think that you know, both of us kind of mirror that comment, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I definitely I definitely shot myself in the foot. Did, yeah. did Andy's MySpace have anything to do with any of that sometimes? We, we, man, that was one of them. That was yeah. that was one of them. That was yeah. uh, that was one where he went off the the radar for three days. I couldn't get a hold of him, and I was like, "Oh my god!" They just said, "Don't tell anybody." This is back in the day when they did <laughs> they didn't understand social media, right, and he yeah. just. You know, he went out, got drunk, and it was just like, just blogged it all. Like, you know, <laughs> fuck, fuck TNA, we're moving on to USA, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, he didn't say WWE, but he named the damn channel. Right. And I was like, oh, my God. I, w- yeah. I woke up to, like, I, the most emails I've ever had in my life. Yeah. And it wasn't spam. It was, like, fucking real emails. Right. And and I was like, well, fuck, they must have already announced this or something. They told us not to tell anybody. And then once I started reading the dirt sheets, and it was all – that blog, you know, poses for Andy. I was like, Oh no. Oh no. And he had just moved. I didn't know his address. I didn't know how to go get him. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah. Mm-hmm. We got told when those contracts come in the mail, just avoid those ones. Those ones don't count anymore. Oh, <laughs> I was man. like, Duh. I was like, fuck. Damn. Yeah. Damn. That was one of my voicemails. Golly. <laughs> who, who was yep. the voicemail? Who, who said the voicemail? If you don't mind saying it was that, but one of that chick that was in the office for WWE. Okay, I don't know. okay gotcha. Do you have any? Now I know. You know, we kind of take it. You know, peaks and valleys on the show, man. You, you're an amazing storyteller. You're you're the easiest show we've ever had, to be honest, man. Well, but, sweet. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, I know you've got some good Chris Candido stories. Obviously, you were there. Such a tragedy, losing one of the most loved wrestlers ever, basically. And you know, Chris Candido was a part of your team there. Can you talk a little bit about Chris? Yeah, yeah. Um, Dusty's the one introduced. Chris to us like I'd always 
I've never like got to personally meet him. Um, you know, Smothers always put him over and always talked highly of him. But anytime that Chris was around, I wasn't on that show, and it was vice versa on on everything. You know, with so I so I was missing him. You know, just in passing, like you know, over the years, and I really hadn't been in all that long at that point in time. You know, like um, what was that? Oh. Oh three, oh four, something, something like that. Uh, yeah. And and I, you know, I started in ninety eight, so it ain't like I was like a fully big time seasoned vet at that point in time. And and Dusty Rose come in to be the booker, and you know he he really loved uh, Chris, and Chris had got his, got his shit together at that point in time. And he told us that told me and Andy had somebody for us that was gonna you know. How do you uh, say Spike is all the, all the way to the top, pretty much. You know. How did How did and, Dusty say it? If you don't mind me, uh, <laughs> let me hear. I got somebody for you, baby. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so uh, you know, he didn't talk about the list, right? Like outside of like, if you got him in the car or whatever, and, right, and he like right. trusted any. Yeah, fucking yeah. God, he's such a worker, dude. Yeah, um, one of the, the legends, best. man, for sure. Yeah, yeah. fuck. So, uh, so he. Uh, you know, he introduced uh, Candido to us and I, it, like, it was such a short lived stint, but it was like, I mean, we really skyrocketed to the top yeah, yeah. and, and that, then that pay-per-view with the leg break. Um, and, and Chris just like uh, the first time that we went out with Chris, like we didn't, we didn't call anything like me and Nate didn't never really, never really like the baby, we let the baby faces call things and get their little spots in and things like that. And that way we could, we knew our timing where we needed to be on certain things, but we wouldn't fill in the blanks with, with stuff. We wouldn't come back with like, Oh, well we do this and we do that. Mm. And we would just feed off each other. And, uh, so when Chris was like, you know, we, we guys want me to do And I was like, well, Hey, if I look over at you and give you a niggy, fucking grab, grab the leg, you know, if he's, if he's there and fucking, you know, I, you know, they'll just be a manager. I was like, he's like, that's all you want me to do? I was like, yeah, just, I just want you to be just a regular. I was like, we're, we're the naturals. Like we just, we just do it. Like we don't have to call it. We don't have to fucking memorize all this shit. Yeah. So he's like, dude, this is awesome. So, uh, so we go out there and I call Iggy on him and he didn't, uh, he didn't grab it on the, on the first, on the first deal. And I was like, Oh my God, on the fucking, on the trip deal. Right. So, uh, we get, we get in the back afterwards and there's, I covered it. Like, you know, uh, we'll get in the back and he goes, he comes over. Like I totally forgot by the time, by the time we got done with everything, he comes over and he's like, he's really ate up over it. He's like, I am so sorry. He's like, I was so invested in that match. He's like, there was actual heels and there was a fucking baby face and the crowd fucking was eating you guys alive. He's like, and I fucking totally forgot I was even in the match. He's like, I thought I was a fucking fan watching the match again. He's like, I missed the fucking Iggy spot. Yeah. I was like, man, that's cool, man. I was like, it's it cool, cool, man. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I was like, fucking the fact that you fucking, you know, was having that moment. I was like, it makes me proud, you know? So, uh, and so y'all were from that so time good forward. at that time, man. I mean, seriously, y'all were on a different level at that point right there. Yeah. I felt that. I felt it, man. Like the energy, like was so good and just, uh, come crashing down, like in just, you know, a few days, you know, oh like, God. uh, yeah. that pay-per-view, you know, he got his, he got his, uh, uh, ankle broke, uh, Monday was when we set up the surgery for him. And then Tuesday we had to be back at TV mm. and they wouldn't, uh, and it was, you know, at that point in time, it, it was just weird on changing things. I don't know why they can't uh. adapt and overcome. They, like, like, if it's written, it's like, it's like the Ten Commandments. You know what I mean? It's in stone. Sure. Like, and I'm yeah. like, I, and if if somebody can't make their flight or something, I mean, they literally freak out. Like, like the world's come to an end. And I'm like, I'm like, what, <laughs> what, what is going on? Like, just, just change it a little bit. Like, just change things. And so he's got a broken leg, and they can't figure out. Like maybe maybe we shouldn't do the fucking title change right now or anything like that. Maybe we should wait a little bit and see how this yeah. goes. He did just have surgery the day before, yeah. you know. It ain't been forty eight hours yet. Yeah. And and uh, so uh, they wanted him to flip the pile, get in the ring and flip the pile mm -hmm. for us winning, and which all made sense. But now we got this issue, and uh we couldn't get his wheelchair up the back of the ramp. It just would, it, it, we could totally go down the front side of the ramp where the, where the camera catches you. We just couldn't get it. We couldn't get it in the little walkway in the back. They had like oh. the weird, like metal piping, like coming out. Yeah. That did nothing. There was no reason for it to be there, Yeah, but we, we, I couldn't get the, we couldn't get the chair to go up. So, uh, it was like, Hey, do you mind standing and, and using crutches to go down there? And then we'll put you in a chair. 
I'm like, why don't we just go out the hard camera side through, through that little crowd that we have right there uh-huh. and just clear the path and let's go through that. And they didn't want to do that. They wanted us on that ramp for that yeah. shot. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that, so, you know, Chris being the guy that he is, he's like, yeah, that's fine. But he, he was supposed to keep his head or his, uh, his foot elevated above his heart. Yeah. Right, for, right. I, I, I think it was 72 hours. I can't right. remember how at all. I, suppose, I can't remember what exactly what the doctor had said and all that stuff, but, uh, but then, um, you know, we got in there, flipped the pile, um, and we took it home uh, 11 minutes early. So 11, 11 minutes on TV is a long fucking time. Right. And right. Um, what the, the rest earpiece had went down. We, oh. got, we got extra time put, put added on to this because somebody went short. And then the, the rest earpiece went down. He thought he saw Terry Taylor with his arms crossed in the back, which meant if, if your earpiece goes down, like that's the ticket home. Right. So he calls he calls the go home and, and we did it. I mean, we did exactly what was said to do. Uh, and then Mike today comes over and is like, uh, you know, Hey, we're, we still got 11 live minutes on the air. So Candido gets that time on the microphone right there to cover and he just, you know, cuts his uh, impromptu promo and fucking it's a great promo. And like, you know, I'm still selling because we it was a fluke win, you know, and this and that. So I'm like, I'm pulling on Mike Tanay's leg the whole time. I have no idea what the fuck's going on, by the way, because we <laughs> weren't told to cut a promo or anything. So he's going, you know, how do you feel about it, Chase? And I'm like looking in the camera all cross-eyed and everything. I'm like, who won? Who won the fight? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so we get in the back, man, and Jeff is just, he's pretty fucking pissed. Man. He's got his head set off. He's yelling and this and that. And I, I didn't know what was going on. And the rest the rest took the blame for it, you know, sending us home early. And uh, so, you know, all the, he was off us. But starting out, like, coming through there, just getting yelled at. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, after that, like, uh, we flew home. We had another taping. We had a pre-tape the next day. And then um, then we flew home Thursday, I guess it was. And then I heard about him over the weekend, you know, passing of the blood clot. And mm. I had to read it on the internet, man. I had people texting me. Mm. And nobody ever called and told me about it. So, you know, it was like, it, that was one of those things where I was like, man, you motherfuckers. Like, that should have been, the, you know, family first. But, I mean... Yeah. In the wrestling world, like we should have got that phone call from the office, and we right. still those days still have it. Right. Yeah, it's messed up. You know, messed yeah. up. Man, um, kind of running, going Broadway here. Um, you, do you got anything that you want to plug that's coming up? This will drop on Monday. This coming Monday. Do you got anything after that you want to plug real quick? Man, I ain't even looked at my calendar. I ain't got a fucking clue. Okay. It, uh, just Google me, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. That's a t-shirt, man. <laughs> yeah. with that. <laughs> so, what's all your how can they contact you on social media? Uh social media, I got Facebook, uh Chase Stevens. Uh I don't know. Just look up Chase Stevens. It'll, it'll pull me up at some point in time. Yeah, uh, and then <laughs> then my Instagram's uh a real Chase Stevens because there's a fake one out there, probably. Man, <laughs> we got to get a part two out of you, brother. Yeah. Seriously. This is, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's got the feel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy stories. I mean, we could honestly go on forever as there's plenty, plenty of stories that, that you and I haven't talked about. There's plenty of not even close. That we only made the O2. Yeah, seriously. I still got another. I still got another twenty-one years left of talking to do. <laughs> Let me ask you this, real quick, real quick. This will be a quick one, okay? How good and how underrated is Chris Michaels? Seriously, like one of the mo- like top ten most underrated workers of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah think he's so. in the top ten. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that I, I I can't have a bad match. I have tried and tried to have a bad match with him. I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just he's too fluent, man. He's too too good for his own good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, definitely got to have a part two. You know, we'll we'll. Yeah, we'll, I was gonna say, Jimmy and and Chase, there. If you know, you said you got twenty one more years to talk about. Well, if we can get you on part two faster than we got you on part one. This show might still be around. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we're here for. We're here for longevity. You know what right. I mean? 
Right. right. <laughs> Don't yeah. give it to them all at once. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Got to save a little bit, man. But hey, man, I appreciate you uh, you doing this uh, for us, and I'm sure everybody listening is happy to that you that you came on, man. Uh, had some people ask about getting you on here, but it, as well as I, you know, I've been trying for quite a while. So more like, why haven't you had Chase? And I think yeah, that's why, why people it's, say it's, it's not from lack of him trying. Like it really, yeah. it's getting me on the phone is an act of God. Like. Yeah. I, you know, I had to yeah. tell my mom, I had to teach my mom how to text message so she could talk to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, oh, yeah. uh, good rest of you. And uh, again, thanks for coming on. And Jimmy, when we come back from the break, going to be Ask Wolfie D Anything. Yes, sir. Ask Wolfie D Anything. I don't even know what's going to happen, what they're going to ask, but we're going to do it anyway. So <laughs> after that, yeah. All right, Chase, buddy. Thank you. Seriously. Oh, man, I appreciate it, guys. Everything good? That was fun, man. Dude, that was great. Yeah, literally. Awesome. Easiest show ever, bro. Seriously. (laughs) I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. See you, man. Yeah, you guys have a good time. Thank you for for everything, man. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, man. Thank you, Chase. All right, see you, guys. DJ, hit the music. Boom. right we are back with ask wolfie d anything and brother 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 chase stevens man what a cool show dude yeah. he's he's his own show man he didn't even need us man. <laughs> pretty much man uh, yeah we just scratched the surface there there's a lot more and i promise you there's a lot that uh, just won't be talked about as far as that goes so yeah uh, we we had a good good interview there yeah we appreciate chase and like i said known chase for a long time and uh <laughs> Uh, good good conversation man absolutely and just a, he's a good dude man and i will say this you know there are stories that maybe we won't ever talk about with but we plan to have chase back on once we can track him back down and get yeah. him to a spot that he'll talk to us but you know when it comes down to it if you were listening for that story that you may not ever hear that one so yeah. and, and that's up to wolfie and chase that's not up to me i don't tell them what to say or ask and when it comes down to it man sometimes stories are just where they are the thing is this man uh that particular story those people were both both are my friends you know uh, yeah I, I, I don't take sides in that and i really don't care to know details i don't care you know what's done is done i've been in I, I, i've been at odds with both of them before um in real life so it's yeah. just how shit goes sometimes unfortunately but yeah uh, yeah. yeah so there ain't no need to rub that salt in anybody's wound or anything like that man yeah you know exactly I mean. so yeah. let's get to this ass will be anything all right the first question is from giggity giggity on twitter <laughs> i swear that's his name all and right. he, yeah it's a simple question and, I, and i'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on this because I, I actually would wonder this as well who is your dream guest or guests on the podcast if you if you could wave a magic yeah. wand yeah. maybe maybe go with somebody who's not here with us anymore maybe a few yeah. or maybe somebody I mean, that's people, still here oh you know? my, my answer is on if they're not here anymore obviously i'd love to have uh hawk and animal and i'd love to have randy savage be able to talk to them uh but as far as, as somebody right now if, if the one that i you know uh, it's probably just financially out of uh, what we do here uh, would be Ron Simmons. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Know, uh, I'm cool with Ron, but Ron's also old school, and he's, he, you know, he doesn't do shit um, for small amounts of money. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it, it, our, our budget doesn't necessarily <laughs> meet up on the same, and, and we're fine with that. You know, obviously, if it funny. works out. Yeah, but you did pull out Ahmed Johnson, bro. So. I did. I I've mean, pulled out uh, everyone we've had. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> Every guest we've ever had, you've gotten those. So never say never on old Mr. Damn. But 
you know, when it comes down to it, that's a great, you know, I guess my dream guest, and this is crazy. I'm going to say a couple here, but, you know, obviously there's, you know, the Brian Christopher's, the Josephus is the yeah. Tracy Smothers. Those yeah. are obvious ones that, you know, you said oh, Hawk and animal, but I know you meant all those two as well. Yeah, you know, Chris Champion. Fuck, Chris man. Champion. God. My friend, Steve Dahl. There's so many people that I do have stories with, you know, that they, they're not here to tell them with me, you know? Absolutely. Billy and you Travis. Billy Travis. Yeah, man. I mean, there's so many so, here that, you know, but I, you know, my one, I man, I would say, you know, we've had a lot of guys like that, that I never thought we would ever get obviously the Steve Kern and, 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 you know, just some great ones, man. And even the guys that some people never thought we would have like Jamie <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah. of course, you know, Dutch would do a lot to get Jamie on his show. It appears, but you know, <laughs> when it, when it comes down to it, I think my dream, guest and and this one is just you know somebody that i think anybody would want and that's obviously the nature boy rick flair i think yeah. you know uh, you know there's a lot man. It, it, you know it was a trip that we had my my main ricky morton you know so early on yeah. you know yeah. I, I would like to have him on with robert you know but right. again that may be the same level as ron simmons you know so we'll we'll see maybe maybe in the future but anyway i i would definitely say rick and and you know we know rick has got his own shows and many of them he's done with his son-in-law and stuff so a lot of his stories are out there but still man just to talk to the nature boy would be amazing so yeah yeah, Terry Funk. Terry Funk's another one, and and maybe yeah. maybe someday. So anyway, those are the, nobody asked me that question, but <laughs> I'm gonna give you my answer anyway. So anyway, the next question is from the last in line on Twitter, and this one, I, you know, it's funny. I think he might have listened to Ahmed and heard my question, and then wants to ask it to you. So okay. it says not asking specifics of dollar amounts at all, but what was your biggest payday ever? Okay. And then what year would you say was your biggest year of money making? So, so first, what would you say is the biggest show that you made money on? Not, not a dollar amount. We're not yeah. getting it. Uh, is one of the WWE pay-per-views. It wasn't WrestleMania. Um, yeah, we've the, all kind of heard that from Jamie, but yeah. I think, I, made, I think I made pretty good on hardcore heaven 97. Yeah. Uh, um, and to be quite honest with you, man, I've made some really good payoffs on these conventions. Yeah. And to me, that's a booking. And what I go home with is what I go home with. And those are pretty lucrative sometimes. <laughs> yeah, man, they are. And you've you've shared those with me. And, and I'm happy for you anytime you can get that. And I think that's probably a lot of your biggest frustrations, you know, with your with your homie PG-13 partner, Jamie. Yeah. Is, True story. Is, you know the amount that's there and could be had if if everybody was on the same page, but yep. you know, so that's uh, you know some people question maybe your frustration with him. Well, it's just Jamie being Jamie. Well, man, <laughs> you know, like if you went to your job and somebody said, "Well, hey, dude, called out sick today, so you don't get paid." Well, yeah. you get paid, but it's just minimum wage or yeah. I'm just making up a scenario here. Yeah, but yeah. It's significantly if a person didn't show up to your job and it significantly cost you money, you would probably be a little upset, even though you're friends with the guy, you know. So yeah. and in your case, it's a brother. You know, he's your main yeah. homie, you know, longtime right. partner. And I don't want to beat a dead horse about this, but I'm just trying to give a little, you know, because I think some of our listeners and maybe it's not even our listeners, maybe they understand. But I do think some of the social social media guys will will kind of they don't understand the full yeah. aspect of it and i wanted to draw that out yeah 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 so anyway okay the next question we've got is from you know my my old buddy and and honestly one of our best question askers is ben martin on facebook <laughs> okay this is a crazy question okay and i've never heard and and i think maybe this is tied into something that you have told but i don't know if i've ever heard you tell this one so obviously ben martin on facebook he's my intelligentsia yeah, he's gonna bring a good one here so it's an owen rib story and okay so it says jamie swears that both of you were involved okay so he's he's heard jamie tell the story he says that you all were led into like a janitor's closet only to be trapped in with Undertaker, Mark Henry, and a few others, and that Owen turned up the thermostat as high as it would go, and y'all were trapped in there. Do you do you know that one? Jesus. I do not, and I feel like I would. Um, no. 
<laughs> I don't recall that. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it didn't happen without me, but I, I'm pretty sure that never happened to me. Never happened to you. It does sound like something that would jog memory for sure. You know? I mean, yeah, I uh, have no recollection of any part of that story. Okay. And even hearing it before. Yeah, never. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, hey, I, I'm, obvious- not, I'm not just senile, but uh, <laughs> that's not a thing. Or, okay. or at least I wasn't involved in it. Okay, so Jamie may have thought you were there, and Jamie yes. could could have been in there. Been in. Yeah, and I just can't imagine Taker, Mark Henry, and any of those guys getting ribbed so much that they yeah. were. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there's a lot of variables there that almost seem like a crazy story, but hey, you know, he's, he's heard Jamie tell it, obviously, yeah. so anyway. Right. Well. Hey, they can't all be yeses and they can't all be true, you know? So tell them to text J- or, you know, message Jamie and get a full story on that one. Or, or where I want to see where did Jamie say this? Yeah. Yeah. We'll find that out. I'll find that out for sure. And yeah, what a, what an interesting story. I would love to <laughs> hear more about that, but obviously Wolfie was not involved and obviously Wolfie has answered all the ask Wolfie questions. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm glad you're feeling better since you've already been through the surgery <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> the surgery. I know what you mean, but theoretically you're, oh, through, you right. know, I didn't we record it. ahead. People were, were actually <laughs> taped and in color as people say. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's it, brother. That's all I got for ask Wolfie anything. That's all the questions for today. Yeah, man, that's all we got, brother. One thing I do want to address real quick, and I don't know how to fix this, and I feel like it's a weird thing, but of course we are at Live Wolfie D on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now we are at Live Wolfie D on X. So Elon Musk owns Twitter. Okay, he buys Twitter last year or this year, whatever, and he has now rebranded it as X. And... You know, the main annoying part of that to me is I've made so many of these images promoting (laughs) it says Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. So for the moment, and I feel like a lot of folks are still doing this, we're going to still call it Twitter. But, man, it's just weird. So if you want to call it that, it's at Live Wolfie D on X. (laughs) Whatever you call it, it's at Live Wolfie D. (laughs) Yeah, you you Google it, bitch. (laughs) Yeah. As Chase said, they're not that you all are bitches. But anyway, long story short, that's it, brother. So, yeah, take us on out, Wolfie D. I yeah. just wanted to address that with the people. So Yeah, man. Thanks again for listening to us, guys. Uh, share us, like us, subscribe to the stuff. That's what we need more than anything. I mean, obviously, we need the listeners, which is great. But, man, those subscriptions really help us out. Um, so thanks again, and uh, tune in next week. We'll see what we got for you. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise. This team does it all. And all they ask is, give me back my pro wrestling. Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's right, it's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah! Hey, 
Hey everyone, this is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you're interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M, the man, 73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World. Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at genejacksonpod.com. If you're a fan of rock music, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to check out my podcast. It's called the Decibel Geek Podcast. We've been doing it for about 10 years now. We talk about Kiss. We talk about Ozzy. We talk about Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and Metallica. We talk about all the legends from the 60s and on up to brand new bands that you should be hearing about today that you're not going to hear on the radio. It's Decibel Geek. Wherever you find your podcasts, you'll find us there. If you love rock and roll, I can almost guarantee you're going to love my show. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. I got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. He got a cat for you, don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause you're spitting the truth. Still lobbing in color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap. I like enemy other. Back in the day, I was NOD. And I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tied us up as taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Lay low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks from over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be right. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. Like the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When my finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. And I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby Huh, I got a cap for your dome I got a cap for your dome We got a cap for your dome We got a cap for your dome This has been a James Rock Street production